right, I got all the dirt out of the bed. Um, I have been stalling all day, so I'm about to lose the light. So I'm just gonna do a quick video showing planting them. Um, so if you've never planted a tulip before, the pointy end goes up towards the sky. The fuzzy, dirty end goes towards the ground. And you just set them in here. That's all you gotta do. And then just put a lot of them. And I'll, I'll do a before and after picture here. The after photo might have a flash. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm like forgetting how early it's getting dark now. Um, but yeah, so these are my, my new tulips. These are the tulips that I uh, was able to save out of the ground. And you can see they obviously have the roots, whereas the commercial tulips won't have roots on them. Uh, but that doesn't matter. The tulips don't care. You don't have to wash these or anything. I'm just going to put them right back in the ground. I am going to count how many of the old tulips I use and how many of the new ones. I'm going to use all the old tulips and intersperse with new ones. And I'll give you the dimensions below here. And uh, I'll show you guys the total number I used. And that should give you an idea of how, how many tulips you can reuse year after year. All right, let me get into planting some tulips. One hour later. All right, so I got all the tulips planted. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I forgot that it gets dark so early, so I really kind of dilly-dallied all day, and now I'm in a big rush in the evening just after the sun went down. But there they all are in their beds. Um, so I, I planted 378 uh, new tulips and 184 old tulips. They're obviously in there pretty tight. Um, I usually keep it a pretty good spacing just to get as many uh, flowers in kind of a tight area as possible. Now I'm going to take all this dirt and I'm going to dump it into the hole and call it a night and then we'll pick this back up in the spring and I'll show you what uh, tulips look like once they came up. Hello and happy spring. Um, just want to do uh, an update on our tulip beds for this year. So it's uh, still March and uh, before everything, uh, the tulips start blooming here, um, I wanted to show what things look like and you can see this bed, we have crocus. So basically what I did is uh, after I planted my tulips in this particular bed, um, I put down a layer of dirt and then I put down some crocus, about two bags of crocus, just to kind of experiment. Uh, the, the Dutch call this lasagna planting, where you're planting in layers, um, so you get successive blooms. And it, it looks kind of cool. Um, I haven't done it before, and I think it turned out okay. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I put down some mulch, and I did that before any of the plants had grown in like this. And obviously, it stopped most of the weeds. Maybe not those dandelions, but most of the rest of them look okay. Um, and so, what I really wanted to do is show you guys how I protect my bed from deer. Um, that's the single biggest uh, threat I have to my tulips every year are deer. Um, so if you look at these leaves, you'll see there's kind of a white milky kind of stuff on there. Um, what that is, is this stuff. Uh, I use a product called Deer Stopper. I'm not recommending that particular product. You use anything you want. All this is, is putrescent egg solids. So uh, I actually had read an article where somebody made it themselves, so uh, I'll put a link to that. Um, this is just a regular electric sprayer. I just peeled the label off and stuck it on here so I know which one's which. And then um, they use a pleasant to use formula, which I think is rosemary oil, I'm not sure. Um, and it just makes it smell a little bit better. It doesn't smell bad, honestly. I mean, you know, I wash my hands and stuff, it doesn't smell great, but um, all that does is it gets on there and it coats the leaves and then it prevents the deer from wanting to just go to town on my bed like a salad bar. Um, and you know, it doesn't work 100% because they will, they will test it and see if anything's edible. Like you can see that little nip right there. Somebody took a nip of that and said, ugh, that doesn't taste good. So they're gonna, they're gonna try it out. I mean, that's what deer do. They're, they're always testing the, the environment to see what they can eat. But I also wanted to just show you guys what the bed looks like before everything flowers. So these are just the common flocks right here. These are ground flocks. And you can see right now, it just looks like a ground cover. That's what it looks like the majority of the year. 
and then uh, I'll zoom out a little bit here so you can see the bigger picture. And then there's my other tulip beds. I didn't do any, um, I didn't do any um, crocus in here. I was just experimenting a little area. I've got uh, grape hyacinth in the front. These are irises, but right now everything's pretty much still working its way into spring. All right, I'll check back in a little bit here and I will show you how everything turned out. All right, welcome back. Um, it is springtime here and the tulips are flowering and the creeping phlox is blooming. You can see all the creeping phlox. Um, I really like this plant. It's very easy to grow. Um, I don't water it. I don't do anything really. Only thing I have to do with the creeping phlox is every once in a while I have to weed. As you can see, there's the mighty dandelion. It has once again won that battle. Um, and I do mulch. And then if I have a bare spot, like right here, you can see a little bare spot. Uh, I'll just go buy another plant and put it in there. I've tried subdividing them and, and they don't subdivide uh, very well. Um, but, or at least I haven't had any luck with them. Over there I've got Siberian iris. And then up here on the bank, I've got tulips. So um, it's kind of the star of the show. Um, lots of tulips. Um, in front of them I put grape hyacinth. So you can see the grape hyacinths right there, and then the tulips. Um, and the grape hyacinths are very easy. I just planted them. I know some people talk about them kind of taking over. I'm not that worried about that. Um, they seem to do fine for me. But the uh, tulips, that's a different matter. That takes a little bit of work. Um, I can't just let them grow year after year. I have to actually replant them. So what I do every year is, um, as you saw earlier in the video, I'll dig them up. I use a screen and a wheelbarrow, put the dirt up there, screen out the tulips. Everything that is about the size, a little bigger than a quarter, I'd say like a ping pong ball sized, about that big. Um, I'll keep those will uh, produce flowers the next year. Everything smaller than that, I will compost and um, those will not produce flowers the next year usually. You have to wait a couple seasons. And then for every tulip I'm able to save from the ground, I usually have to buy two fresh tulips. Um, I buy mine at Costco. I think in total I bought 2,000 tulips, which was 40 bags of 50 tulips each. And um, I think in the US I pay like $13 a bag. Uh, so it's not too bad, but it is definitely an expense. This is a lot of tulips, so that's 2,000 for this full bank. Um, you wouldn't need, this This might only be like 200, 300 tulips. Um, and then I, I replant them and then I have to spray for deer. I showed that a little earlier in the video. Obviously uh, keeping the deer at bay is a big part of my job in the spring. It takes me, if I'm focused, it takes me about two hours to replant one of these little beds. So it probably takes me like 12 hours total to do all the tulips in the fall. But I like being outside in the weather. It's not a chore for me, personally. <laughs> so anyhow, this is what you get. Um, lots of people like to stop by, take pictures, which is wonderful. And um, then when these die back, I'll plant zinnias. And I love the zinnias. That's actually why I have the butterfly sign here. Uh, I get tons of butterflies with the zinnias. Tulips really, I get people, they attract people. Uh, zinnias attract butterflies. Um, some people might ask, why don't I just do nothing? Why don't I just let the tulips naturalize as they say? Um, to be really clear, this is man-made. Uh, this is not what they look like when they naturalize. Well, I did a video, I'll put a link to it. But basically, the tulips, if I did absolutely nothing, um, they would not come back like this next year. There would be much less tulips, much more grass, you know, green growth with no tulips. And that's because the tulips have subdivided and uh, you're just not going to get that mass of tulips the next year. Um, you can see the flocks here, so I'm working my way around. So this is the first year after I've replanted flocks. Kind of patchy, but eventually it will grow in and you'll get a full, full area of tulip, of flocks growing in there. There's the grape hyacinths in front, tulips in the back. And uh, 
really, I mean, it's, it's really nice. Um, you get about four weeks, I'd say four weekend, maybe five weekends if you're lucky of just beautiful tulips. And, um, like I said, I mean, it's uh, labor of love and I enjoy doing it. Um, otherwise I wouldn't do it. And, uh, I hope this helps somebody out there if they're interested in tulips and planting and stuff. Um, and I definitely recommend when you don't have tulips, plant zinnias or something that attracts butterflies and other, other plants. Don't, don't just leave the bed bare because it's, it's such a shame. Uh, zinnias, I just directly plant from seed. Um, and I absolutely love the zinnias and they work well as a rotation with the tulips. So I hope that helps and good luck. Happy gardening.